Assalamualaikum I am Associate Professor Dr. Muhammad Fadil Arsyad Your lecturer for ECS 444 Okay, in this session We are going to learn about the uh, Design And how to calculate a load uh, That acting on the structure member So The learning outcome of this lecture Is to differentiate between structures And structures member You should be able to identify what is the structure member and what is its function. You may also identify the types of load. You should be able to identify and uh, calculate the ultimate design load. And then we are going to calculate loads on slab, calculate loads on beam and calculate loads on column. Now Let us look on what is the difference between structures and structures member. From the slide given, you can see that what's mean by structures. Structures is a, a building, low rise, medium rise, and high rise. The structure also can be a bridge. A structure also can be a dome, can be a tower, silo, retaining wall, tunnel, and etc means to say that structures is a things that been used for its purpose while structure member is refer to a members that contains in the in the structures so we can see that from the slide the structure members is refer to slab beams columns stiffener connections foundations we might also have a tension members compression members bending members and cable okay this slide shows some of the structures and the other slide represent the structures members and its function from the slide we can found that the structure members such as roof and the functions of roof is to cover uh, a structure member beneath it we might also have a slab where the slabs refers to uh, thin uh, members that covers the area that we can work on it we might also have a beam which is a horizontal member which been connected by pin support it may also support by uh, fixed support it might also support by roller from the figure we can see there is a beam which uh, supported by pin uh, members we also have a column where the column is referred to a vertical members and its functions to carry a load from a beam and a slab and then directly transfer the load to the foundation and the last picture shows that uh, the foundations it is a pet footing where the functions of footing is to transfer a load from a roof, slab, beam and column to the ground safely. Hi guys, uh, now we are going to uh, learn on what is the difference between architecture drawing and the structural drawing. This is an example of uh, architecture drawing. So normally in architecture drawing, you will see a drawing, a floor picture, okay, where there is uh, an area, okay, a use of area will be written there. We will have toilet, we will have kitchen, we will have bedrooms, and then maybe we will have uh, a door, we will have a window, we have a brick wall, okay, we have a partition wall. And then maybe we also have some grid. Okay, so this is a grid of X axis and this is a grid of Y axis. We can see on uh, X axis normally it were written in alphabet. Uh, example here we have A and B and then on the Y axis will be in numbering uh, systems where we have number 1, 2 and 3. Okay, here we have some dimension where it is 8,500, 1,000 and 4,000 as well. So we may have a legend, uh, so this is some of the legend that normally been used, which is we have brick wall, door, window, and etc. 
uh, you might see more of the fit architecture features in the real architecture drawing. So, what is the difference between the architecture drawing and the structural drawing? So, let's say this is the structural drawing that we are uh, transfer. Okay. Okay, we are transferring uh, an architect drawing into uh, structural drawing. So this is the same uh, dimensions of the building. Say this is eight meters or eight thousand millimeters. Here we have four thousand millimeters, and this is five thousand millimeters. Okay. In structural drawing, we won't see the use of the area. What we can see is only an intersection of line, which represent the area of slab, the area of beam, and then the locations of column. How we are going to allocate the locations of column? The normal practice is whenever there is an intersection of beam, there will be a column. So this is an example where we're going to have a column. Okay. Another uh, practice in order to determine the locations of column is by identify the length of beam. Normally in a building, the length of beam should not be more than 6 meters. If the length of beam is more than 6 meter, then normally engineers will apply or will put a column okay, into it. So with that, we can shorten down the, or shortening the length of beam. Okay, so let's say this is the beam where we have a grid A of A, B, and then we have 1, 2, and 3. Say beam 1 AB, we can see that the length of beam is more than 6 meter. So it is recommended to put a column in order to reduce the size of beam. But anyway, it is largely depends on the needs of architect. Say in this example, we can see that in the middle of 8 meters, we have a window. So it is impossible for us to put a column in the middle of A and B because we want to put a column uh, we want to put a window so in this case we might refer to the architect either they agree for us to put a column or not if the architecture agree to put another column to shortening the length of beam so we can put a column but if the architecture say no they still want the length of beam to be 8 meters, so we have to follow the architect orders. So let's say in this case, architect don't want to put uh, a column in the middle of the beam, so we proceed with length of beam AB, 1 AB to 8 meters. Another thing that we have to identify in the structural drawing is the locations of beam. So normally when there is a uh, a wall, there will be a beam beneath it. Okay. Instead of that, we also can identify the location of beam by looking at the area of slab. Normal practice for a building, the area of slab should not be more than 36 meter square. So let's say uh, in our case, let us see on what is the area of each uh, slab that we have here. Say the length of beam here is 4,000 and another one is also 4,000. So here we have 4 times 4, we have 16 meter square which is less than 36. So still okay. So we don't need any beam here, any, any beams more here. Here also we have uh, 16 meter square. So we don't need a beam here. But in this area, we have 40 meter square, where 5 times 8 equals to 40 meter square. So in this case, we have to uh, allocate a beam in order to reduce the area of slab.
Okay, if we want to maintain with this slab, this area of slab, this, the thickness of the slab may be, become thicker as compared to normal uh, slab thickness. So, in this case, we may put uh, another beam in order to reduce the area of slab. So, let's say we put a beam here. Okay. So, we have about uh, 4,000. Okay. 4, 4 times 5, we only have 20 meters square. So, now the area of slab is reduced from 36, for, from 40 meters square to uh, 20 meters square. So, this is how we are transferring the architect uh, drawing into a structural drawing. Thank you.